Texas. They say everything's bigger here, and they're right. We've got big cars, big hearts, and even bigger stakes. This is beef country, Texas. Home to the Alamo, the Cowboys, and the largest military installation known to man. So big, it has a big name. Fort Hood, the great place. It's got a Texas-sized podcast as well. And this is it, right here. Fort Hood's great big podcast. Yeehaw. So there's a coin shortage. And welcome back to another week of Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Hi, you, Charlie. It's Coin Talk with Charlie. It's Coin Talk with Charlie. It's coin Talk with Charlie and Dave. Well, let me interview you. Tell me more. Well, you see, people don't have coins. Yeah, I never carry coins anymore. See, and that's part of the problem. Okay. See, So why would there be a shortage when I don't carry a coin? Well, see, technically there's not a shortage, but there is. People are hoarding? Uh, well, so COVID, right? Yeah. People don't like to touch stuff. Right. So people started paying with cards more instead of exactly of coins and, and bills. Yeah. And what happens is, um, here's... They're not the, in circulation. The life of a coin. Okay. Um, so you pay for something with the dollars and coins. It goes to the local business. The business takes it to the bank. Mm-hmm. The bank packages it up. It goes to the mint. The mint takes out the bad coins and stuff and coins that have been damaged, whatever, sends it back into the economy, and it's this okay. a circular thing that just keeps going. Well, when all the businesses shut down because of coronavirus right. and people started paying with cards, buying stuff online, doing sure. stuff like that, uh-huh. it disrupted the flow. So coins stopped flowing into businesses. It stopped being put into banks and stopped going back to the mint. So the mint now doesn't have enough coins to send back out. Oh. So the coins are still there. They're just... In people's pockets. Yeah, sitting there. Yeah. So if you've got a big dollar purchase, make it in coins. Get but those they coins don't want out there. It. Yeah, they do. That, no, they don't. You know the satisfaction... I'm, I'm saying businesses, that no cash transactions. Many of them say that. But do you know the satisfaction of paying for something like, say, a new car in quarters? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, back up the truck. Yeah. You got a dump truck? Well, no, not if I can't pay in quarters. Well, there you go. What I need the quarters for. But it's that's that's the problem. It's, it's created a national coin shortage. Wow. Not, but the fact is, people aren't using coins, so they don't know it. Everybody's like, what? National <laughs> coin shortage? What? Yeah. And and tell tell our listeners why you are so attuned into this coin issue. Well, I, I collect coins. Yeah, you do. I like coins. Right. You know, there's a special quarter this year. Did you know that? No, well, of so course not. I don't collect this coins. This is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to, look at me, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. connect this back to the Army. Okay. All right? Ooh, I can't wait. What is 2020 for the Army and the military in general? Uh, that's when everybody sees straight? Well, almost. It's the, uh, the 75th anniversary of victory... World War II. Oh, V-Day. Yeah. Yeah. 75th okay. anniversary. Yeah. So on a very limited amount of quarters this year, okay, the Mint has stamped V-25 on the Washington face of V-25 quarters. V-25 or 75? Yeah, 75. Sorry. Okay. sorry. Yeah, V-75. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Going back in time. V-75 okay. on the face of the quarters. Right. Like in the middle of his forehead? No, no, no. Off to the left. Oh, okay. So he's kind of right. looking at it. It's it's not large. It's a small V seventy five, and the quarter will also have a W mint mark. So Which you know, is West Point. Yeah, 
right? West There's Point. a mint at West at Point. West Point. So most Again, quarters Army you see, Psy. yeah, right. Most quarters you see are either a P for Philadelphia or mm-hmm. a D for Denver. If you buy a special set, it has an S on it for San Francisco. Wow. They don't make much there, though, do they? No, they don't. Just the just the special sets. Okay. But well, these are West special. Point's a big time mint? Uh, they make the commemorative coins usually. Okay. But so these are the second ever W uh, quarters that are ever produ- produced. They've released them. Uh-huh. into the wild and people are paying a lot of money for them so if you just get one that's kind of banged up that quarter is worth 35 bucks or so for a quarter for a quarter wow you get a shiny one it's in really good condition yeah they can be in the thousands well how many did they make uh, a little over a million i think which seems like a lot but when you consider yeah no. yeah it's not how many a lot. quarters are out there yeah so a gozillion mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> So there's a quarter out there that kind of sneakily celebrates the 75th anniversary of of BE Day. Day. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Wow. Learn something new every day. And now that we've lost most of our audience, (laughs) let's bring this to the topic at hand. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, we sat through, or sat through, we were at a community town hall event, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, see, normally those things are in, done in person. Yeah. Uh, but then we were doing them on Facebook Live. Right. But the comments we were having on Facebook Live is, I can't hear you. The sound is bad. Right. Speak up. So we fixed that. Right. Uh, but in order to fix that, we couldn't be live. Right. So it's live to tape. And then we put it up. And we put it on it. there, and people can comment whatever they want. But the vid- the audio is good. You're mm-hmm. going to be able to hear what everybody says. Mm-hmm. Featuring the Fort Hood Garrison Commander. That is correct. Featuring the Director of Fort Hood Public Works. I know him. And featuring the Project Manager of Fort Hood Family Housing, operated by Lend Lease. Yeah, LLC. new to me. New guy. Yeah. New guy. So... Those are the three guys uh, that are talking all things housing Mm -hmm. locally. Yes. But what's uh, also of interest, since we're going to get into housing, right, Mm -hmm. is that the Army released the results of uh, two of the surveys they conducted at the end of 2019, and that release was just last week. Ah, in the days before COVID. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Well, they released it on the 22nd, and then I, I actually saw it on social media on Saturday. So that was, what, I don't know, 27th or something like that. But uh, they had uh, more than 87,000 residents were invited to participate. About a quarter of them responded. Here at Fort Hood, it was like 29%, almost 30%. So if you didn't uh, respond, that's on you. Yeah. That's but, on you. Yeah. Uh, about 30% here at Fort Hood responded because uh, I checked the numbers. Um, but the big thing with, with that was it does show progress. Um, across the Army, they're saying that the most notable increase was in the quality of maintenance. You Very put, good. In a, put in a work order and you're getting better results, I guess. That's what the survey says. And here at Fort Hood, the overall satisfaction rate Mm -hmm. was spring of 2019 it was their their rate was 72 point something percent and they went up two percent all right so that's improvement hey that's more people satisfied than not fast but hey Mm -hmm. if you're going you're going to the right instead of the left right yep so keep it keep radically right keep pushing it Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah uh, yeah maybe not okay yeah let's not but, uh, yeah, re- survey results are out. Uh, we are going to publish this article in the Fort Hood Sentinel, and uh, the Sentinel editor, Todd Pruden, is going to do a write-up on the Fort Hood housing town hall event. Wow. Which we're going to hear all about. Oh, yeah, right about now. Should be a hoot. Right after this? Yep. Okay. Stay tuned. Yeah. Sadowski Field. The parade field outside Three Corps headquarters is again the site of a memorial boot display on an American's fallen since September 11, 2001. More than 7,000 boots featuring the names of the fallen on tags will be on display from sunrise to sunset 
from June 27 through July 5th. This dramatic display captures the courage, honor, and sacrifice of the American military from all branches of service in a somber reminder to us all that freedom isn't free. The visitation to the memorial boot display is free, and the public is encouraged to visit Sunrise to Sunset, June 27th through July 5th. It's what your tax dollars sound like. Fort Hood's Great Big Podcast. Good morning, everyone. My name is Colonel Jason Westbrook. I'm the garrison commander here at Fort Hood. Today we're doing our housing town hall. Unfortunately, we're not doing it in person, and we're not doing it live due to technical difficulties for the Facebook Live uh, that we normally have been doing since the COVID-19 started. Today I'm joined by our project director from Fort Hood Family Housing, Chris Albus. Um, my left here and not to my right is our Director of Public Works, Brian Dosa. So, well, I will tell the folks that we're not doing Facebook Live, we did ask for comments and posts to go to our announcement for the town hall, and I have personally read all 236 comments uh, from, from the posts that were done on, on our announcement on Facebook. Uh, I've looked at all those, and I, I recognize that there are some families that have some issues out there that have not been resolved. And I'm going to take this list, I'm going to give it to our Department of Public Works and to our Fort Hood Family Housing Partner to ensure that we get those issues addressed for you. The goal here remains to provide safe and healthy homes for our soldiers and their families. Uh, through the, the number of comments that were on Facebook, there were several questions that were raised about specific families. I will not address those questions in this forum. I have talked to, to the families that had issues that were raised, uh, and that's not something that's, that's appropriate to be dis discussed in a public forum uh, as it relates to their personal information. Uh, that all being said, I will tell you that significant progress has been made over the last year. Uh, there, there's been a lot of focus and effort. We've had a lot of help from some of the residents identifying issues, uh, and some of, us hold, hold, some of the residents holding us accountable, which I appreciate. We've worked very hard and diligently to improve our processes, and that being said, we're still not done. There is still work to do here at Fort Hood. Uh, some of you may be aware, and I saw posts on Facebook about the lawsuit that's been brought against Fort Hood Family Housing and Lynn Lease. I acknowledge that's out there. Uh, we're monitoring the, the situation, but that's really a, a discussion between the, the lawyers representing the families and the lawyers representing Fort Hood Family Housing and Lynn Lease. And we're not going to address anything with regard to that today. I had hoped at this town hall to be able to talk to you about the implementation guidance uh, for, uh, for guidance that came out in December from the National Defense Authorization Act. I can tell you that the orders and the policies that govern how we're going to implement the guidance from the NDAA is being worked through our higher headquarters, uh, but has not yet been published in an order for us to address. Uh, so for that reason, I, I'm not able to talk to you about the implementation of, of those key things that came out in the National Defense Authorization Act, but we will hold another town hall once we get that order, and we will put out the information of how we're going to implement the guidance from the NDAA. Finally, there's been lots of questions on Facebook about coronavirus and the resources and the services that are available on the installation, uh, both on the garrison side of the house and on the Fort Hood family side of the house. We'll address some of those issues today and some of those concerns, and we'll talk about some of the resources that are available of what's open. We daily are publishing on our Fort Hood Facebook site and on the MWR site a comprehensive list of those services on the installation uh, that are either open, are open with reduced capacity, or are closed. Uh, as we continue to open services as the situation with coronaviruses allow, we continue to update that spreadsheet so that people can look to see uh, what services are available. And finally, I'd like to highlight one big success that we've had. Uh, Fort Hood Family Housing has started the Resident Advisory Board, and this is created of, from family members uh, within the residential communities that have volunteered, been elected by their communities to represent them back to Fort Hood Family Housing in the garrison. Not all 
villages on the installation have representatives. So if you think you'd like to be part of that, I'd encourage you to reach out to your community manager and Fort Hood Family Housing so that we can start the process to get you involved. We've seen some quick early wins uh, from the results of the RAB, the Resident Advisory Board, and I look forward to working with them. They meet monthly and they're providing some great information to us that we can help to solve problems with. With that, Chris, I'd ask you to talk about some of the uh, projects that are ongoing. Specifically, we have a repair project uh, that you guys have put information out about uh, for the exterior repairs of certain homes. Could you give us some information on that, please? Sure, Colonel Westbrock, and good morning, uh, Fort Hood. Uh, as Colonel Westbrock mentioned, I am Chris Albus, the new project director, uh, just signed on on uh, the 1st of June. And as a 25-year veteran of living in Army housing, uh, I understand some of the challenges that we have here at Fort Hood, and I'm committed to making these houses as safe as they possibly can be for, and the living experience as uh, high of a quality as we possibly can. Uh, and the, one of the first things I did was I sent out two messages, which you may have received earlier in the month, regarding uh, communications for this repair project that Colonel Westbrock uh, mentioned. Um, it's a new project. It was approved in conjunction with the Army for exterior repairs on 920 stucco homes in Comanche 3, Montague, Kuma Villages, and Comanche 2 Villages. Um, these are commonly known as the initial design phase, or you'll hear them called the IDP homes, and these were homes that were built between 2002 and 2006, right after the Army privatized their housing. The repair work will include stone, stucco, siding, and roofing work and it's being per performed by a qualified third-party contractor with oversight by a Fort Hood Family Housing Project Management Team, the Army's DPW, and a third-party architectural engineering and building science consulting firm. We're going to start the work uh, in mid-July, and the project should last for approximately 15 months. Now, for the resident, each home should take between three and five business days to complete, keeping in mind that this is all exterior work. Um, resident notification and communication is very important and we'll provide that communication at least two weeks and then 48 hours before the estimated work is to begin in the home. We've set up a web, web page on forehoodfamilyhousing.com which is available for you to view the scope of work, frequently asked questions, and the maps of the project areas. But if you have any other questions about the project or any other activity inside the community, please don't hesitate to contact your great community managers that are out there who will be more than happy to assist and answer any questions. Fort Hood Family Housing remains committed, like I told you, to providing safe and healthy homes where the families live, work, and thrive. And this project exemplifies how we are continuing to do so in a very proactive and thoughtful way. Mr. Doza? All right. Well, hey. before we go there, I'm going to steal a little bit of his thunder because mm -hmm. he likes to, he likes, has this little mantra, and, and he likes to say short term pain for long term gain. Uh, we get questions about road construction here in the houses uh, and on post all the time. You know, we had we had tank destroyer torn up for a while, and thankfully that's that's all back together and, and it's nice to drive on. Uh, but there's some other construction going around post. Can you talk to us about the road construction? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. So good morning, everybody. This is Brian Dosa, Fort Hood's Director of Public Works, and really glad to be with you this morning. And before we jump into the questions, I wanted to just take a few minutes and provide an update on on construction, as Colonel Westbrock mentioned. So uh, as I see things, one of the silver linings that's come out of the coronavirus situation on Fort Hood is we've been actually able to make some really exciting progress on construction across Fort Hood, and particularly on roads, streets, and parking lot construction. Several of those projects we've been able to actually move to the left and get done more quickly because of the reduced amount of traffic uh, across Fort Hood. So as Colonel Westbrock mentioned, we've had some successes. Tank Destroyer has been repaved all the way from Mayborn Gate to 72nd Street. We recently repaved 79th Street. Uh, that work is complete. Uh, and I'm very excited. Last week, we just finished the reconstruction of Ratton Drive. Ratton is a small road that connects Tank Destroyer to Santa Fe. It goes by the Holiday Inn Express and by the Shoemaker Center. That was one of our worst roads. Uh, and we just finished that. It's completely paved and open to the public, and so we're excited about that. Some ongoing road construction continues. Uh, we're doing work on 72nd Street over by First Cab Headquarters. We're working on Clear Creek. Uh, and then a couple areas uh, that are going to impact our residents. And so those of you that live or work out at 
West Fort Hood. Now we've been working on Clark Road uh, for quite some time. We finished the reconstruction north of I-14, and we're making some really, really good progress on the work south of, of I-14. Uh, and so uh, those of you that live out there know that the phase that really affected Montague Village and the Youth Center and the CDC and the school is complete, uh, but now the work has shifted more uh, down closer to the to West Fort Hood proper uh, area, Robert Gray Army Airfield. And so that work is going to continue. Uh, we're estimating a completion in October, uh, but it is on track. And I think everybody should be excited. No, I, I know I am about the fact we added bike lanes as part of that reconstruction. And we also added lighting. And so Clark Road was one of our darkest roads uh, on post. And we now have uh, some exterior lighting and bike lanes. And so uh, thank you, everybody, for your patience as we work road construction. And as Colonel Westbrock said, short-term pain for long-term gain. All right, thanks, Brian. And we're going to jump over to the questions that we received uh, through our community life NCOs and from the Facebook page. And we had several questions about uh, access gates being closed on the installation uh, in the housing areas uh, and speeding. And Anita P., thank you. You were one of the, the people who brought up this question. Uh, and I own this, right? So I'm the one who directed uh, that we close those gates uh, in, in the non-contiguous housing areas. We had certain complaints about crime in, in the housing uh, coming from off of the installation. In, in uh, Pershing Park, we had people cutting through the housing area to skip some of the traffic lights. Uh, and so we have closed down some of those gates to enable security uh, and to restrict people who shouldn't be on the installation from coming on the installation. We're actually seeing some benefits from that. Uh, the MPs are able to do access control points, uh, and they're finding people coming on the installation with warrants, with firearms, and with drugs that shouldn't be on this installation. Uh, so I recognize for some that it's not a popular decision. I recognize it's inconvenient for some, uh, but I would encourage you to have your voice heard. Uh, talk to your, your community representative for the Resident Advisory Board and make sure that they understand where you where you see the, uh, the security issues and, and where you stand on the gate being closed. We're gonna continue to reevaluate it, right? It's not a done deal. Uh, it's not closed and we're gonna keep them closed. For example, I know that when we start school back up in August, uh, the gate that's by Venable Elementary School, we're gonna have to open that back up, right? There may be some other gates that we just determined, you know, for ease of traffic flow within the housing community, we need to open those back up. But I need to hear from you. So talk to your resident advisory board member, uh, get, get that information back uh, to us, and we'll continue to evaluate. Like I said, it's not a done deal, uh, and just as easily as uh, DES and DPW closed the gates, we can open them back up. Okay, I think we're going back to the questions, and Chris, I think you're gonna talk about the self-help stores. Yeah, sure. So, um, actually, the next question I've got is regarding uh, lawn maintenance, um, and it's, this is another good question um, that was that was posed. Is there a way to get lawn care while my husband is deployed? Um, we uh, do have a deployed spouse mowing program, and as I mentioned before, uh, your community management team uh, and your community manager is that point of contact where you can go discuss how to get enrolled into the, uh, into the, into the program when your spouse uh, is deployed. Uh, that community manager is really uh, key in, in that communication at the lowest level between the resident and between um, me and, and, uh, and, the, and the garrison as well. And then the other question is regarding uh, when will lawn and garden be open again? Okay, so as Colonel Westbrock mentioned before, uh, not only are, are the Army, is the Army using very strict protocols during this pandemic in order to safely open and, and operate uh, on post every day, we're doing the same thing over at Fort Hood Family Housing. Uh, so when the post returns to health protection condition alpha, um, and we can assure that the safety of our valued residents and, and dedicated employees is, is, uh, is good to go, then we'll consider opening the uh, lawn and garden again. That's a great question because lawn and garden is near and dear to my heart. Um, it's great to see the, uh, the residents requesting um, lawn and garden items um, because it, it lets me know that they're taking care of, of the homes, especially changing their air filters 
every 30 days. So it's a great question. Um, I think the next question can I, is- Can I tag on to the end of that? So sure. you, you mentioned health, predict, health protection condition alpha, and that's not something that we've routinely used as we talk to the, the audience at large, our soldiers, our family members, because uh, you know, we haven't really defined it. What I would point people back to is uh, the spreadsheet that we put on the Facebook page that talks about the services that are open. Uh, and if the Lawn and Garden Center, I think it's in there, but if it's not in there, we'll add that in there. Uh, so when that does come open, we will make sure that it's listed in there so residents will know. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of follow on to what Chris said about the Lawn and Garden. So I think most of you know that uh, if you live in Liberty Village, your arrangement is a little bit different. Uh, so we have 12 different villages on Fort Hood. 11 of those are part of Fort Hood Family Housing, and, and Chris is the project director there. And Liberty Village is, is owned and operated by Universal Services, so it's a little bit different arrangement. But I wanted to point out that Liberty Village also has a deployed spouse program, uh, and they also have lawn mowers. I think they currently have about 25 with uh, several in the shop getting fixed that are available for residents uh, to cut their grass. So please go by and see Mr. Carter, uh, he was the community manager for Liberty Village at the community office. Uh, if you have a spouse that's deployed, and we'll cut your grass out there, uh, or if you need a lawnmower to sign one out. Okay, so I think the next question is mine, actually, and I can take this. It has to do with, um, uh, can someone please address tenants having trailers and vehicles parked in their yards? And so this is a great question, uh, and, and so the answer is no. We, we should not have uh, trailers, trucks, boats or anything else parked in the grass in any of our 12 villages. And so uh, if you see something, if it's wrong, you know, please report it. See something, say something. And so I'd ask you to go to the community manager uh, and make uh, the community manager aware of that situation so they can fix it. Uh, if that's not being resolved in that way, I would ask you to work it back through the sponsoring brigade. So really that means a community life NCO. So mention it to community life NCO. Uh, who can then go back to the sponsoring brigade and we can get that situation fixed. But absolutely, we don't want things, trucks, vehicles, boats, trailers parked in the grass. Okay, thanks, Brian. And our next question uh, I'll take, it's a help for newly arrived soldiers signing for quarters. Uh, the question is, can, someone, can something be done to get new soldiers arriving to Fort Hood a sponsor from the receiving unit so they can be present when doing walkthroughs? Uh, the short answer is yes, but it's not a sponsor from the receiving unit. Uh, so General White, our three corps commanding general, uh, and Command Sergeant Major Hendricks have tasked the community life NCOs to be that person, right? For sergeant and below signing for houses on this installation, a community life NCO is required to walk through the house with them when they do the, the walkthrough for signing. Uh, Chevy H on Facebook also asked, why don't we publicize that we have a sergeant major in the Copeland Center uh, that, that helps advocate for ho soldiers in housing. Uh, the short answer is we do publicize that, but we're in the uh, transition between uh, Sergeant Major Cole, who's retiring, uh, and Sergeant Major Hendricks hiring another Sergeant Major to go into that. In the interim, we have Master Sergeant Munoz, who is filling that role. Uh, so we do have that NCO there, and they oversee all of the community life NCOs who uh, we view as um, is our scouts for the, for the command group here uh, to identify issues in the housing area so that we can raise them to the appropriate level and get them resolved. Uh, in this particular instance, as it relates to soldiers signing for houses, uh, they are tasked, they are directed for soldiers signing, E5 and below, signing for homes to walk through those homes. Okay, thanks. So the next question goes back to what I was talking about before regarding lawn and garden. Uh, a resident is asking, does Fort Hood have a self-help store? We call it the lawn and garden. It's uh, physically located over on Warehouse Avenue where my offices are. If you're ever there, come by and see me if you want to talk. Um, and right now, they're physically closed, the lawn and garden is. However, we are, we've been offering for the last three months delivery service on certain items. In fact, I think we've done close to 2,000 deliveries over the last um, uh, two and a half months of the epidemic. Um, those items can be delivered if you coordinate with, again, your community manager out there. Um, based on the demand and the request of the residents, we've also uh, reinstituted uh, lawn mowing equipment, which is issued by appointment at the physical location, Monday through Thursday, 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock, and then return the next day by 12 o'clock. 
Um, likewise, those appointments as well need to be made through your community managers. And I'm not sure if uh, uh, Liberty Village does anything similar. Yeah, thanks, Chris. So we, uh, at Liberty Village, we have uh, lawn mowers that are available uh, for residents to come by and sign out. Uh, and so I think we signed them out for 48 hours at a time. So please, again, if you need uh, a lawnmower to cut your grass, please go by and see Mr. Carter, and you can sign that out at Liberty Village Community Office. Thanks. Chris. And then the, the follow-on question to that is why replacement and or delivery of light maintenance items like light bulbs, air filters, especially air filters, uh, stuff that's on that, um, on that select list is taking so long. Um, like I said before, we've, we've done 2,000 um, work orders, close to 2,000 work orders. We've got two dedicated technicians. Um, then that's really all they do is deliver these things. Um, but keep in mind that, you know, the pandemic um, has really um, taken, taken a toll to a certain degree. But our average response time has been 72 hours in order to deliver the items. Um, and again, remember, to receive these, these items, contact your community manager uh, and not the call center. I've, I've met several residents over in the, uh, in the parking lot, and they were really unaware of how the process worked. I personally took care of it, called the community manager, got them the items, sometimes within 30 minutes. Okay, the call center is not the place to call in the work order for the, um, the uh, self-help items. It's the community management team. Um, and I believe that's the reason why there's a perceived resident uh, perception that um, there are delays in delivery. Sir? Okay, so I have the next question. And uh, this is a question, several questions about mold. Mold and housing on Fort Hood. So I will tell you that a lot has been done over the last year uh, to understand and fix and remediate both the homes and household goods as it relates to mold. But this is Central Texas. We're going to continue to have mold issues here in Central Texas. Uh, so as you've done, many of you in the, in the Facebook post, right, and I'm, like I said, I'm taking this to DPW and to Fort Hood Family Housing. Uh, those who raise mold issues in here, I, I hear you. Right, um, We're going to continue to have to fight the mold issue here in Central Texas, plain and simple. Uh, so again, a lot has been done, and I am confident that our partner is working through the, the problem sets that they've had. They've got some great contractors, third-party contractors that they bring in that do testing, uh, that do remediation of household goods, and they're doing that in line with the Texas state requirements. So. That's not to say that everything is good. There are still some challenges, and we will continue to address those challenges as we are made aware of them. So please, if you have mold issues in your home, please come up on the net, notify the community managers, notify the maintenance line. If you're not getting the results that you think you need, engage the community life NCOs. They're there to help advocate for you. And make sure your chain of command is aware, and your chain of command is tracking because they also can reach out to other people on the installation to help facilitate resolving issues. Now, I know that there are some families out there that have had some very challenging situations, and I'm sorry that the families have had to work through that. You know, we, we are working as diligently as we can to resolve issues, and I know that some of you will say that it's not enough. We will continue to be dedicated, we'll work hard, and we will try to resolve the issues as quickly as we can. Okay, the next question I think is on tree maintenance from Jonathan C. And I actually think there were a bunch of questions on tree maintenance here at Fort Hood. So Chris, would you please address that? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. And as I've, I've taken over, I've, I've recognized that trees have been a challenge on post um, for a very long time, honestly. We've got huge trees in some of these older housing areas um, that affect the home in, in several different ways. And um, We've been focused on this. Um, we've got a dedicated crew that comes out twice, twice a month to trim trees. Uh, and we did complete an audit, a thorough audit, about 18 months ago. And that was done by a certified arborist. Um, and that allowed us to prioritize and focus resources on the emergency tree cutting that we had to do inside the housing areas. Now, these emergencies have been addressed. And we are now working through those trees considered to be urgent requests. Uh, we'll conduct another follow-on audit next year in FY21. And this is the first step in moving towards a more proactive tree trimming program. Additionally, uh, we are finishing up a project um, which required Dominion Power, your power company, to cut back trees due to the proximity to the power service lines. And that was a, that was a priority for us as well, and, and it's almost complete. Again, if there's a resident concern about trees, especially any emergency concern that you've got, please call in a work order 
or contact, again, your community manager to call it in. Sir, I think the next question is with regards to bulk trash pickup. Yeah, Chris, I can, I can pick that one up. So uh, really good question and has a fairly simple answer. So the question is, what's the process to request bulk trash pickup at your home? Uh, and so bulk pickup doesn't have to be scheduled. It's just on the same day as your normal trash pickup. Uh, so take those bulky items, place them at the curb along with your trash and your recycle. And so every home in Fort Hood Family Housing in Liberty Village has two 96-gallon containers. One of those containers is a trash bin. One of those containers is a recycle bin. Uh, and so I would encourage folks, please, to recycle. We have a really aggressive and successful recycle program here at Fort Hood. Uh, we have a team uh, down at the Recycle Center that's, that's won several awards at the Army and DOD level because they're able to take recycled material that comes from housing and comes from the rest of the area around Fort Hood, process it, package it, and sell it at a profit. And so here in about a week and a half, we're going to celebrate our nation's birthday with some fireworks. Uh, and so at Freedom Fest, great fireworks show, probably the best in, in central, if not all, of Texas. All of the fireworks are paid for out of proceeds, profits, from our recycle program. The recycle program also funds other community uh, type uh, activities and events. And so it's in everybody's best interest to recycle, uh, but I would just ask everybody's help. Uh, so we've had a lot of challenges with, again, we have two bins at each home, a recycle bin and a trash bin. And we've had some challenges with trash being put in the recycle bin. So I would ask you to put the trash in the trash bin and then on the recycle bin, we've got a sticker or a label on there that says and shows pictures of all the things that can be recycled and should go in that container. So please put only recyclables in the recycle bin. We'll come by and pick those up same day as your trash. We'll get that to the recycle center. We'll sell it, package it, sell it, uh, make a profit. It will be able to support those communities. So thanks for your help on the recycle. And Brian, and thanks. And I, I would offer to the, the residents here and the soldiers, if you haven't been over to see our recycling center and the single stream recycling plant, it is quite a thing to see. Great, great facility, although I'd encourage you to find a time when it's shut down because it is very, very noisy uh, when you go over there. And then just a quick public service announcement for the 4th of July. Uh, we, we had to make a decision for because of coronavirus, we're not going to have the same uh, you know, big blowout 4th of July celebration that we do here at Fort Hood. That being said, we are still going to have the best fireworks in Central Texas, right? So I encourage people to come out. Uh, where it's going to be filmed by a couple of the local news stations, and we're going to be able to sync it on a radio station, I think, to the 1812 Overture. Uh, so it's going to be a really good event, and you'll be able to, to park around the area of the stadium to watch uh, the fireworks as they go off on the 4th of July. Okay, Chris, I think we're talking next to you about your community offices and other amenities. Yeah, this, this is another good question, too, because this is really kind of near and dear to my heart as well, when the community offices will be reopened for full resident access. Right now it's by appointment. Um, they'll, uh, they'll meet you at the door with all the proper protocols and everything in place in order to address your needs. But it's really important to get those back open as soon as we possibly can because, again, community management teams, community managers who I've got confidence in are really where a lot of the problems are solved, a lot of the issues are, are raised, and a lot of stuff happens at that level. Um, so I'm looking forward to being able to open them. But right now we're continuing to monitor this pandemic closely, as we've been talking about in the, you know, already, and we're synchronized with the Army to open in a complimentary fashion. So as soon as the Army begins to relax some of the restrictions, we'll consider opening up the community centers for full access. Um, in case you haven't know, you should have seen this on Facebook, we have safely opened up 48 of the 63 playgrounds. We continue to open the playgrounds. And we do plan to reopen the pools in the coming week, complementary again to what the Army is doing as well. Um, part of this whole pandemic has really forced us to go online with communications. Um, and one of the questions here is what's been done to improve online communication engagement. Communication is very important. You know, my priorities are safety, communication, and trust. Communication is very important. It's kind of hamstrung when we're doing things like this on, online and whatnot and not being able to engage the, uh, the residents. Um, but our communication right now is really primarily through Facebook, the Forehead Family Housing website, Rent Cafe, which you guys probably know is the resident portal, 
And then this new uh, initiative we rolled out, which is called Red Flag, and that's a resident communication platform which sends emails and text messages. Uh, we've done, a, I think, a fairly good job of, of, of proposing virtual events that have been created for residents to participate in. Uh, and that's increased, I think, in a, uh, increased outreach to residents. It's also increased participation on the Facebook page. Uh, we've gone up from uh, 66,000 page views in May of 2019 to 74,000 uh, this past May. And that's a clear indicator, I think, of um, the improved site performance, but also resident engagement. Um, the next question, I think, is for you, sir. Yeah, so just talking about some of the amenities, and you said you're going to complement some of our uh, uh, our resources that are on the installation. So a couple of questions as it relates to coronavirus effect on services across the installation. Uh, so with COVID-19 positive numbers increasing in the surrounding area, can families, residents expect more restrictions on the installation? And the second question there, is there a plan to reopen the gymnasiums on post? If so, can we provide an expected timeline? Uh, so. I'll address the first question with the increasing numbers in the local areas. Can we expect to see more restrictions on the installation? I will tell you that General F. Lant's, uh policy, his goal is to not put more restrictions in place, uh, but as we see uh, rising levels uh, here on Fort Hood to isolate those to, to areas, to bubbles, right? So we had a unit that had uh, was doing some training and they started getting more positive, so they reeled back their training uh, and took you know some time off with people not coming into the office uh, to to get that back under control and move that. Same thing, you got soldiers that are out in the training areas now uh, on ranges. And uh, if you were listening last night, I think I heard some big booms from the from the tank ranges. I was very excited about that. Um, but if if a unit is on a range and the unit next to them is on a different range and has coronavirus positive cases start to come up, well, we don't need to stop all of the training. We need to make sure we've isolated the two units and focus on that one uh, that is having positives and that other unit continues to train the, the unit that's having positives takes care of their positive members. Uh, as we talk about the services across the installation, uh, so right now we have three gyms that are open, Harvey Gym, Starker Gym, and the West Fort Hood Gym. So is there a plan to open the rest? The answer is yes, there is a plan. Uh, but it, it comes uh, with an associated cost of ensuring that we have the staff members there to staff the gym and the resources to sanitize uh, in between people using the equipment and, and during the usage periods. Um, right now, those three gyms are open during typically high peak times, uh, and we're not seeing a lot of soldiers using the gym. So I don't know if that's a function of we don't have the right gyms open uh, or soldiers just aren't comfortable going back to gyms yet because of the coronavirus. Uh, I've asked the director of M FMWR to look at that and maybe adjust one, the schedule, and two, the gyms that are open. Now, as it relates to retirees and dependents getting into the gyms, um, we're, we're continuing to monitor uh, the spread of the coronavirus, uh, and, and we're not there yet, but we will eventually open the gym back up, gyms back up to dependents and to uh, retirees. Uh, on the installation, we have two of our pools open, uh, Club Hood and the Comanche Pool. Uh, they're open, I think, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, and the hours are posted online through the FMWR website. And there are a number of other services uh, that are fully up and operational. For instance, all of our child youth service uh, centers are up and operational and running. Um, and we continue to, to monitor uh, and to make sure that we're doing all of the mitigation measures that are necessary to stem the spread of coronavirus. I will tell you here, we're, we're fairly fortunate, right? We have a very healthy population, and we generally have a population that are rule followers and, and do what they're supposed to do. There's always exceptions to the policy. Uh, we here at Fort Hood have seen an increase of coronavirus cases over the last several weeks, uh, just like the surrounding community has, just not at the rate the surrounding community has. And if you listened uh, to our hospital commander, Colonel Rich Malish, yesterday, at our uh, community services council, 
Um, while we've seen an uptick in the positive numbers, we're testing more, so we anticipated to see more positive. What we're not seeing is an increase in severe issues in our, in our hospitals and in the intensive care units. Right? We, we've had a, a handful, they've all recovered. Um, and so while we do have a few cases in the hospital now, it's not a, a spike of cases that require people to go to the hospital and overwhelm our hospital system. And as he said yesterday in the Community Service Council, the local hospitals are seeing pretty much the same, uh, the same conditions that we're seeing here on Fort Hood. Okay. So the next question is for me. And this is actually a really good question too. It's about uh, what we can do about the constant pest control issues. I uh, like the trees. This has been something that's been uh, on my uh, dashboard for, for a while now, as I think we've seen an uptick in um, some pest control issues around this particular time of the year here. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you is make sure you contact Fort Hood Family, Ma Family Housing Maintenance to schedule the work to be done. Just keep in mind that there are certain con uh, conditions and issues that are outside of our control, so there may be follow-on work orders that need to be uh, executed in order to ultimately address the problem uh, and, and, the, uh, and the conditions. Um, we have, in Fort Hood Family Housing, um, decided to hire an additional pest control technician, so hopefully we'll get that person on board here in the, uh, in the very near future to help with that volume of work. Hey, Chris, before we go on to the next question, I think related to pest control, is uh, stray animals uh, and barking dogs uh, in our neighborhoods. And we got a couple questions in on that that I wanted to address. And so if you have a barking dog in your neighborhood, we would ask you to, during the normal business hours, to contact the community manager, address it with your community manager. If it's after hours and it's really bothering you, please call the MP desk uh, and report it to the MP desk. Similarly, if you have stray dogs or other animals that are in your in the housing areas or across Fort Hood. We have a dog catcher, a stray animal contract uh, that's run out of the DPW. Uh, you can call the, the normal DPW number, 287-2113. That's 287-2113. That's what the number you would call for any facility or issue that has to do with DPW across Fort Hood, but that would be the number to call and report a stray animal. And again, we have a dog catcher that will get out and, and get after and pick up that stray animal. Thanks, Brian. That, that was, I think, a question asked by a couple of folks, specifically about the stray animals, uh, KDR and, and a couple of other folks that had asked that question. So th thanks for covering that. With regards to uh, the COVID uh, effect on routine maintenance work orders uh, in both the houses and barracks, I'll address the houses piece here. That's a great question. Um, you know, since this thing started roughly three months ago, we had to stop based on uh, safety. We had to stop with all the uh, routine work orders, the face-to-face -face routine work orders of the residents. Um, that caused us to have a backlog of 800 open work orders. Um, we've focused the teams in order to get back out again, and we've gotten that back log down to uh, 33. I think we're actually one of the best posts that are out there across the entire portfolio. Um, all those work orders have been scheduled, and we do expect them all to be closed by the end of June. Yeah, thanks, Chris. So similarly, for all the other facility maintenance on Fort Hood, when we went to a shelter in place um, and somewhat closed Fort Hood back in the March-April time frame, <clears throat> we uh, started in DPW only doing emergency priority one DMOs as we sent a lot of our workforce uh, to shelter in place at home. Uh, that was about six weeks. And so you can imagine over a six week period, we developed quite a large backlog of routine work that needed to be done. Since then, we've brought our DPW workforce back uh, and we're working very, very hard to get after that backlog in all the other buildings uh, across Fort Hood. Uh, However, at the same time, uh, the temperatures have risen. We're now in the summer months uh, here at Fort Hood, and so we're fighting through a lot of air conditioning challenges like we always do this time of year. And so our maintenance techs are working extremely hard uh, getting those air conditioning calls fixed and then also getting after our backlog. And so thanks for your patience. Uh, we're making some pretty exciting progress. And I, I, can, I can second the work that our, our uh, technicians are doing. I had the opportunity to go see them. Uh, when the Warrior Transition Barracks air conditioner went down. Uh, fascinating to see the underground side of a barracks. 
uh, and what all goes into making that thing work. But the team out there is working very hard to make sure that the air conditioners are working in our facilities. I will talk a little bit about barracks because we had a question from Lee M about barracks uh, and the condition of the barracks of his stepdaughter. Uh, and so Lee, I, I, what I tell you is we have 99 barracks on the installation. Of those 99, 19 of them are currently in renovation. Okay, uh, we have five of those will be done later this year, and then we have 10 more going in later this year that are already funded. Uh, and then over the last eight years, we've done 44 of those. Uh, so we're still working through uh, the maintenance. Uh, I will tell you, having been a, a, you know, a young private once upon a time, soldiers are hard on barracks. Uh, and uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but when we renovate these barracks, we're taking them down to the cement floors and cement pillars, and then building everything back up inside. So when they come out of renovation, uh, they're, they're brand new. Uh, and the ones that are renovated are phenomenal facilities uh, that our soldiers are living in. Uh, but some of those old ones, I agree, there's some work to be done on those. And, and it's programmed over the next several years. Uh, we, we do have a plan to get after all of our barracks that need to be renovated, uh, pending funding from the Department of the Army. Uh, right now, we think we're, we're on track and we, we've got a plan to, to get those done. So, uh, Lee, I appreciate your question. Thank you. This, this next question is really a, a good question. It has to do with uh, what oversight is Fort Hood providing over Fort Hood Family Housing Maintenance, the work that's being done by the Fort Hood Family Housing Team. And so this is an area that over the past year we've really, really made tremendous progress. Um, about a year ago we hired seven new employees in the DPW to come in and be housing inspectors uh, and and their responsibility is to do what we would call a quality assurance check so after Chris and his team does maintenance in a home we have our inspector come behind them and make sure that the work is being done to standard uh, they're focusing primarily on two areas the first is what we would call change of occupancy maintenance and so while we are or when we have a family that moves out of a home uh, the Fort Hood Family Housing Team comes in and does a fairly extensive um, maintenance um, regimen in the home to bring it up to standard. And when that is completed, our housing inspector comes in and does an inspection. We're using an Army standard checklist, um, and we inspect that home, a quality insurance check, to make sure before that home is offered to a new family that it meets the Army standard, that it meets the garrison and Fort Hood standard uh, for uh, that home. So that's the change of occupancy. We're doing 100% quality assurance checks there. Uh, then on all the emergency work orders, the priority one work orders that are called in, we're doing a quality assurance check. Those same seven inspectors doing a quality, quality assurance check on that work, uh, following up with the resident to make sure they're satisfied. And then we're doing a random sample of the routine work, the priority twos and threes. Uh, following up to make sure the work is done properly and that the resident is satisfied. Yeah, Brian, that's great. And I, you know, when I would comment on the process, uh, when they do the change of occupancy maintenance, the Fort Hood Family Housing Team is doing, they have a team that does quality control after the change of occupancy maintenance. Right. And then the DPW team comes in and does the quality assurance check. And, and all of that happens before the home is even offered back to the, the leasing side of Fort Hood Family Housing, right? So there, there's at least two times after the change of occupancy maintenance that issues can be identified and, and fixed or, or returned back to maintenance uh, before it even goes to the leasing side and, and is offered to another soldier. And, and I would highlight, too, that the, uh, the community life NCOs are doing a great job uh, as well um, working with soldiers, advocating for soldiers, and making sure that uh, residents are getting the maintenance taken care of that needs to be done in, in the homes. And working with DPW um, in, in, in concert with them, we've gotten the pass rates up um, and we've gotten the failure rates down. But we're not, it's not good enough, though, because our goal is zero failure rates. Um, but I think I do believe we are pushing out a pretty good quality product uh, to incoming residents. Um, and that ties into the next question, which is regarding curb appeal, which is also very important to me, very important to Fort Hood Family Housing and to the, uh, to the company. And the question is, who does a resident contact if other homes in the village have overgrown yards and excessive trash around their home? That's a, that's a really good question because I see, I see a lot of great residents out there keeping their, their, their home up um, and, and making sure that and it just really reflects in the pride they have in their home. 
Uh, but I have seen examples, very few, but I've seen examples of uh, uh, people that may not be doing the same thing um, inside their carport, inside their front yard or whatever. So I would encourage you to contact your community manager, again, as the first step. And if that's not resolved, then if that doesn't resolve it, then contact the Community Life NCO and alert them. Um, I will tell you, there are Army units, brigades, that have responsibility over those, those communities as well. I don't really speak to that, but they're very engaged, too, as to how soldiers, residents are living on, uh, on post. Um, and then the question about curb appeal, I will tell you that um, curb appeal is very important to Fort Hood Family Housing. And um, you know, we've got roofing project going on right now. We've got painting. I mentioned the uh, IDP project. We're getting ready to start mid-July. We're upgrading HVAC systems. But we, we invest approximately or $1.5 million a year into improving curb appeal. Uh, I'd encourage you, uh, if you have any uh, concerns or if you get any ideas on how to improve that curb appeal, be it in the neighborhoods, on the, on the playgrounds, uh, in the parks, wherever, you know, contact the community managers, let them know what your ideas are, or even better, contact the resident advisory board, the RAB member, who provides direct feedback to uh, the three of us up here at this table and other stakeholders throughout Fort Hood. Uh, and I think and Liberty Village is under a little different arrangement, um, owned by a different company, but Liberty Village committed to curb appeal. Uh, we have some really nice trees out there, uh, but if there's issues with uh, residents not keeping their home looking good, please address it with Mr. Carter at the community office. And if you have ideas about, about curb appeal, uh, please let Mr. Carter know or, or someone here like myself in DPW. Okay, and I, the last question is mine here, and this is one of my favorite questions. Uh, so we've been asked, why don't we tear down some of the old houses and build new ones? Hey, amen, right? Um, there are some houses on this installation that I agree, they need to be torn down, we need to build new ones, but that, that comes at a cost, right? Uh, if you look at the funds that are available to do that, one, it costs money to tear houses down, and two, it costs money to build new houses. We don't have that funding right now. I can tell you that it's not ready for publicizing anything yet. The, the housing partner is working through some options of how they can generate some funding to do that, just that, tear down houses, build new ones. Uh, but, but we're not there yet, and we, we've got a long way to go. You know, when you look at the ground lease uh, for 50 years with the housing partner, uh, when that's up, when that, that 50 years is up, uh, we will have about 78% of the homes on this installation will be either over or just about at 100 years old. Uh, so I agree, right? There's some, there is some maintenance, there's some demolition, and there's some rebuilding that needs to happen on the installation. But until that funding becomes available and we have the ability to do that, um, we're going to have to work with what we have, and we're going to have to do maintenance that's required. Um, the, you know, I wish it were that easy, right? I wish it, you know, we could take different pots of money and, and figure out how to do that, but the, you know, there are laws governing how we do that, and uh, we can't just you know, take money from one thing and put it to another. Okay, hey, y'all, hey, this, is, this is not my ideal situation in, in way of doing these town halls. Okay, uh, I would much rather do them in person, uh, but we're still limited in construct for uh, coronavirus and how we're doing, doing some of these public meetings. I would much rather, you know, as a second option, do this on Facebook Live and get some live personal interaction uh, with, with the residents that are out there so we can answer real-time questions. Uh, we did the best we could based upon the situation that we have. I appreciate everybody who passed questions through the community life NCOs, and who put you know, some of these 236 comments on Facebook. All right, as I said at the beginning, I read every single one of them. I pulled off six pages of comments. Uh, we've got some research because I, to do because I recognize some of your Facebook names don't match what your, your name is you know, as it's on the lease for the, for the uh, houses on the installation. Uh, but, but I'm committed to taking these issues and giving them to Four Hood Family Housing and to DPW to get them addressed. Um, so with that, the next time we do this, um, at a minimum, we're going to try to do Facebook Live. Uh, and if we can, if the coronavirus has, has calmed down enough and enables us to do this 
live and in person, I'm committed to doing that as well. Uh, so for those of you that you know, stayed for the 30 to 45 minutes or so that we've been talking, I appreciate your attendance and, and thank you to those who again raised questions. And Chris, Brian, thanks for being here with me today. And I hope that this was useful uh, to the residents that are out there and we've got some good information out there. So thank you. Hey golfers, are you looking for a new course to play? The Courses of Clear Creek is a 27-hole course with challenging greens located in the scenic rolling hills of Fort Hood. With a 300-yard driving range, two putting greens, and a four-hole kids course, we're the premier golf course in Central Texas. Our pro shop is always stocked with the latest golfing equipment and name brand apparel, while our beautiful pavilion overlooking the course is a great place to enjoy a cold beverage. The Courses of Clear Creek, open to the public, offering annual, monthly, and summer membership packages. Give us a call today at 254-287-4130 or find us on the web at hood.armymwr.com. Uh-oh, I bumped my head. Coming on strong on a Monday. I feel so low. So there was everything you needed to know about lawn care. Yeah. Need to, uh, need to, I bet people didn't know that when you join the army, you can borrow a free lawnmower. <laughs> it's one of those hidden benefits. Yeah. Absolutely. Read list for the benefits. Right. The lawnmower. <laughs> hey, at least you got a yard. Exactly. That's nice. Exactly. But, uh, so now that we've talked about the, the town hall and we've all gotten to experience that, those that didn't fast forward to this point. We now have another big, momentous day, fast approaching. Fast, fast approaching. Tell me more. Well, I will. National Coin Day. No, I'm just no. joking. It's uh, not. Come on. Please. It is the 4th of July. Dun, 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 dun. You don't know the uh, 1812 overture, do you? All right, tune in again next week. Wait, no. <laughs> you know, Brianna, who's not here right now, yeah. uh, has to play the flute part for the... Really? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. For the... Flute solo. She's All right, got a, Charlie, tell me about it. Let's stop singing right, and sorry. goofing off. Well, you know, goofing off, this is well, sort of serious business. You know, every year, Fort Hood has the best fireworks display in Central Texas. Some say the whole state, and it's a pretty big state, so that's, that's, a, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah. COVID? Paid, paid no. for by Fort Hood Recycle. That's right. All your recycling goes to blowing up stuff. The, uh, what yeah, does? I can see that. It does. It does. We are the Army. Well, COVID has made things a little more challenging this year. Yes, it has. Because normally, I mean, it's a big get-together in the stadium. There's food trucks. There's partying. There's Bouncy usually houses, a, face a, painting. A big-time musical act. Yep. Somebody playing music. And then a fireworks spectacular at the end, all capped off by two hours in traffic. So. Right. This year, they can't do that because of social distancing. Right. right? And, and the COVID. But they came up with a solution. It's drive-in fireworks. Okay? So they're still going to blow them off. Oh, things are still going to explode. You just get to see them from your car. Yeah. Or on TV. Right. You got two choices. But it's much more fun to see stuff explode in person. than You can watch something explode on TV any day of the week. You don't get to see it from your car. True. And it will be a, a 4th of July to remember. Hey, remember the 4th we spent in the car? Just don't bring sparklers <laughs> from in there. That's that's a bad idea. Let, let the exploding happen yeah, outside the car. That's a good idea. If you smell gas, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what they're going to do is they've, since you can't go to the stadium here, right. they've opened up a bunch of different parking lots. Okay. So you're going to be able to, to drive your car onto post starting at 7 p.m. Okay. on the 4th. Uh, if you don't, if you're not a military member, you're going to need to have a pass. Right. So that's done at the uh, visitor, the visitor center. center. Yep. So make sure you have that or you're going to get turned around and everybody's going to get backed up in traffic and you will not be a hero for the day. The, uh, the festivities start at 9.30 p.m. 
Okay. So you want to be in place before that? Before that. Well, that's why it opens at seven. Okay. Because I mean, you want the, you want the good parking spot, but then my brain said, hold on, Charlie. Where is the good parking spot? Well, what if, what if you get the bad parking spot? So you're further away, but that means you can leave faster. Yeah. That's, huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, it's wherever you decide to park. Mm-hmm. It's at 930. Um, you're going to have to bring your own food. If you're going to have food, there's not going to be any concessions and or drinks. It's still going to be in the nineties. So bring this your own. Texas. You know, this is like going to the drive-in. Yeah. The cheap way, you know, you'd try to hide the popcorn in the back seat <laughs> and all that stuff. So and three friends in the trunk. Yeah. yeah. It's just like that. <laughs> just don't hide anybody in the trunk. They'll figure it out. Yeah. That's don't not a good that. idea. Um, but yeah, bring your own food, bring, uh, popcorn. Here's the deal. They don't want you getting out of the car. Nobody's going to stop you from getting out of the car. Right. But it's smarter not to do it. You know the COVID situation out there. You know the numbers are going up. Don't yep. don't risk it. Bring something that you can eat, snack on in there. Um, you're going to be able to tune in your radio. Yeah, to, the fireworks are to music, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're going to tune in the your radio. The actual 1812 overture. To K-Rock 101.7. Wait, what is it? <clears throat> K Rock 101.7. Hey, way so, to go. Yeah, thank you. So you're going to have to uh, you tune in your radio to that. And then the fireworks are synced up to the music. <laughs> so uh, if you're not going to come, if you're going to be a couch potato, like me, yeah, you can tune into KXXV channel 25 or KWTX channel 10, uh, who will all be streaming them online. Okay. And on the, the TV on your big screen. Who wants to watch fireworks on a phone? Yeah, no. Nobody wants to watch fireworks on a phone. Yeah, not so much. So that's what we're doing this year. Hopefully next year we can get back to... Back to Freedom Fest. Freedom Fest. This year it's it's uh, parking lot fest. Yeah. What'd you say? Traffic fest? Traffic fest. Yeah, traffic fest. Well, the good news is we still will have one aspect that won't change. What's that? Uh, the traffic jam after you still spend two hours stuck in traffic afterwards. Yeah. Make sure you fill up your car with gas before you come in folks. Yeah, that would not be cool. Yeah. You're going to need that gas. Luckily gas prices are still low. Yeah. True. Low or low yeah. ish. Hey, that it's remember when they were like three or four cents in just a month. Cents. Isn't yeah. it funny how we are about gas? We'll be like, Hey, it's two cents lower there. I've saved. 30 cents. And, you, you know, that's a big, you won't stop right. because you'd pay an extra 30 cents. <laughs> I drive the extra 20 miles for yeah. two cents a gallon. I mean, I'm like that. We're all like that. Yeah. But really, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't work. Yeah. No. But so it'll be a 4th of July to remember one way or the other. I want to remind people, do not bring alcohol. Drive safely. Don't drink and drive. No, no, no. Do not. Do not. The MPs are going to be out. Do not. <laughs> Yeah. So a party when you get home. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And with that, we should wish America what? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, America. Are we going to sing this? No. Okay. Oh, no. Come on. We need Brianna. Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, if you want to sing it, you may sing at home. You have my permission to begin singing (laughs) now. (laughs) You can sing at home. But until next time. Yep, yep, yep. Until next time. Happy trails to you. And happy birthday. Driving down the road.